Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Security. We are today we're going to talk about the cross site request forgery or you can say CSRF. Uh, the reason I want to talk about this vulnerability is it's not very exciting, but recently I've been doing uh, pen testing and I, I found this vulnerability in quite a few apps. So I feel like, you know, since it has lost its rank in the OWASP top 10, people have have not been paying attention to this vulnerability, but this is still a uh, fairly critical, and, and that's what we're going to see today. Like, we're going to, and there are a lot of questions around CSRF, because when I take interviews and I ask someone, like, what is the CSRF, they they can't explain me, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, confidently, like, they have good understanding on what the CSRF is, how you mitigate it and everything, so... That's why I thought, like, yeah, let, let's let's talk about uh, light subject this week and 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 uh, show you guys how the CSRF actually works. So, uh, in the simplest example, the cross-site request forgery, as the name denotes, uh, attacker uh, trying to uh, lure the victim to click on something like you know, execute an HTML page or execute a request behalf of an attacker using the victim session. And and that's how the CSRF happens. Now, uh, there is a sta uh, understanding, or or I would say there is a myth that CSRF only happens in the post authenticated pages, which is true, which is which is 100% true. But uh, there is also possibility, there are also cases that it can also happen on the login pages, on the on the login, like you know uh, where you put the username and password before authentication. So. Uh, there, there are ways uh, in the modern application you prevent that uh, CSRF into the authentication as well because uh, an attacker can able to steal your credentials. Uh, there is a, there is such attack as well. Uh, maybe we'll see if we get time to talk about it in this video. But I don't want to make it too lengthy, so we'll we'll keep it short. Now, how do, how do you find the CSRF? Uh, there are there are multiple ways you can do it. Uh, one, there are scanners, of course. Uh, uh, scanners can effectively detect the CSRF. Like I've been using multiple scanners, like IBM AppScan, then um, uh, there is Rapid7 AppSpider, or you can also uh, say Burp. I'm not sure if Burp uh, accurately detects the CSRF, but all the other dynamic scanners can easily detect the CSRF. But let's say you do not have access to CSRF. What is the simplest way you can find it? So the simplest way is after you log in you capture any request or, uh, or sorry i meant to say capture any post request where you're submitting any data and then look through the request parameters and find out if there are any random token or random values you have in the request parameter which you have not submitted or user has not provided the input if that's present that means that's a csrf token anti csrf token and the csrf vulnerability can be avoided. There is no surety if this token is present, because there uh, there are chances that this token is present, but there is no validation on the server side. So again, that's something you have to test when you're doing the penetration test. But uh, that that's the uh, like you know general uh, or easier way to find it to look for any random token into the request parameter, and it does not work if it's only on the cookies because uh, again that's the whole point like you know cookie is attached and sent by the browser so uh, that that's not uh, the anti csr token has to pass by the in the request parameter now what we're going to do is we're going to see a, a demo on how you can exploit or how someone can exploit the csrf i tried to find like you know a good example but uh, then i stumbled upon the uh, demo test file uh, which is which is a like you know easy way to demonstrate how the CSRF actually works. So let me open the demo test file. So, okay, so this is the, uh, let's sign in page. There are two users to this side. One is admin. So for example, let's log in. Uh, that's, uh, let's assume this is a real banking website and this is your account. Uh, and what you would generally do is you would transfer fund from one account to your checking account. And let's say you did 12 bucks. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll set up the uh, burp so I can capture the request. And first we have to see how do we find the vulnerability, right? So I'm gonna click on this transfer money. Okay, looks like my burp was set up. All right, now it is. I'm gonna do another transaction, 15 bucks. 
transfer money okay from and to account this will be different all right now the request is captured there you go now as we have seen this uh, body request body uh, we don't see any random value so like this is my account this is my other checking account this is the amount I'm transferring and this is the actual activity right so there is no random value I, I find in here that can prevent the CSRF so there are high chances that this could be possible like uh, there is possibility that this could this could uh, have the CSRF vulnerability. Now, uh, another good thing, if you are if you have the bulk pro version, uh, you can uh, generate the CSRF POC by simply. Let me go again slowly. So just go to the engagement tools and generate CSRF POC. So this way you can easily uh, generate the POC. So you can also do uh, like you know without having the pro version. It's not very like rocket science. You just create the HTML page. You provide the script uh, to submit the page. Then you have the form, action, and post method, and all the values. Uh, so simply like you know what I used to do is so I can copy HTML, right? So let's assume uh, we have this. Uh, okay, let me bring it here. So. I paste this one. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can easily see it. So generally, for the next time I find this CSRF vulnerability, and if let's say I don't have the bulk pro version, what I do is I just need to uh, like you know change these names, like transfer amount to account from account, and the value of it, and then simply like you know of course you have to uh, update the action value as well. So that's that's the easiest way you can do it. Like you can reuse the same script by just changing a few names here and there. All right, so in this case, uh, let's say uh, attacker, this is, uh, we are assuming this is the attacker's atta account, and of course, this attack only works when you're authorized, when you're authenticated, so attacker knows which uh, input parameters that need to be passed and in order to perform the successful transfer, right? Now, let's say, uh, we're going to sign off from here, and let me turn the intercept off. I'm going to sign in with J. Smith account and assume, let's say, J. Smith is the victim, right? Now, what attacker wants to do is, uh, where is the script? Okay. Yeah, so what attacker wants to do is, he wants to transfer, let's say, from this account to this account, right? Now in this account, uh, now in this scenario, uh, these both accounts are uh, held by J. Smith. But uh, let's assume there is one other ac uh, account number, which is uh, that there is a way in this uh, in this banking and and every banking has like you know you can do cell transfer or you can use uh, direct wire transfer. So they replace two account with their account number, attacker's account number, right? And from account is the victim account number. Now they made this change. Let's do hundred dollars right we're gonna save this script now what attacker can do is they're gonna send this HTML page let's say either we have some IAM methods or maybe they generate a, a web like you know they set up a website and they user on that website and they click on this link which would uh, initiate this request there, there are so many like there are so many phishing social engineering activities by which attacker can get this script to the uh, victim's browser. Now, in in our scenario, let's say so here, as you can see, uh, the uh, victim is logged in. So, and victim has access to this page. So we're gonna click on it, and it's going to uh, open the script here. Uh, with, of course, when they click submit, now as you can see. $100 was successful transfer from this account to this account. Assuming this is the attacker's account, uh, everything will be transferred from here to here, right? And now we can also see that in the recent transaction, that yeah, uh, they, it did go through. So here in this example, we did internal uh, account transfer, but you can also do external account transfer, and that's how it works. So how it actually worked? So the way it worked is, uh, let me, uh, Open up the script again into our browser, 
and let me capture the request so you can see in the see in the slow motion so now this request has initiated this activity and as you can see uh, this is the same uh, request body parameter that we had sent now this cookie part we did not set up in this right we did not send any cookie information authenticated cookie but that's the magic here like browser actually send this information uh, if the user is already logged in so attacker does not have to worry about this one and that's why we said like you know, if you have any random value in here you can easily prevent the cross site request forgery because attacker would not know what is the random token of the user who is logged in so that's the best way to uh, mitigate this vulnerability right i'm going to turn the intercept off and if you go back to the browser of course 100 will be transfer again if you go to the recent transaction we'll be able to see that Okay, so uh, this gives us a good demo on what is the CSAF vulnerability and uh, how it actually works. Now let's talk about some mitigations. Now there are multiple mitigations and there are multiple ways in depending on your situation which one you want to adapt. Uh, but the first one is token-based mitigation which we just talked about. You have some random anti-CSRF token which is in the request body which would only be valid for one user so you do not have same token for everyone right you have when the user logs in when the user is authenticated and and uh, and you also want to understand this for the interview because interviewer will ask you like you know how do you prevent this attack so when the user is logged in along with when you set up a session token you also set up a, a random token and that token uh, has to be uh, included into each of the requests submitted by the user. So that's how when the uh, when the request comes to the server, server is going to validate whether the token matches. If it does, then the uh, transaction will go through, otherwise it will not. Uh, the second is same side cookie. Uh, so the same side cookie, how it works is it allows the cookie, uh, like browser will not attach the cookie, depending on what parameters you have set but there is a flag here the lax and strict and uh, other flag you can set so based on that you can determine whether the cookie has uh, browser can send this cookie uh, which the where the request is originated by the domain or not so that that's way that's another way you can prevent this uh, and this is all like you know defense in depth like well, the main defense you have to have is the token based mitigation uh, the other thing is you can verify the origin header uh, so if we go back here to our burp and uh, history here. Let's see, uh, do we have origin header here? Okay, unfortunately we do not. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, do we have origin header here? Uh, we do not, but that's okay. So if let's say there is an origin header, you can always verify it where the request was actually originated. If it's not originated from the same domain, from the website is hosted, then you can simply uh, decline the request. Uh, if let's say the origin header is not there, you can check the referral header. If the referral header is the same way, like if it's not from the same domain, you can simply reject the request. Uh, double submit cookie, uh, this is quite interesting. So for the lot of recent application, I did advise this mitigation because a lot of recent application do not maintain the state uh, what I meant is you do not have a, a way to uh, use like one token uh, like uh, there's no session so like there's no way you can maintain uh, let's say you are using a single sign or something like there's no way you can maintain the session so what happens with the double submit cookie is you submit that random token into your cookie as well as in the request parameter Every time a request comes to server, server validate whether it is a valid token or not, and then it goes back. So every time uh, in the cookie there will be value, but that cop uh, the value in the cookie random value will be copied into the request body, and then it will be sent whenever the post request happens. Uh, there is a good tool, uh, OWASP CSRF card. Uh, the, I think it's for Java applications. So that's a good tool. Uh, you can integrate with the application to avoid this vulnerability as well to protect against yeah this vulnerability. Now in the recent uh, like you know in the modern technology, modern application, uh, 
you would not see cookie based session like you know the request they are mostly api based you have just a bare token it's a stateless like you send a request you get a response and that's it like there is no session maintenance on the server side uh so that's uh, uh that that's the reason i guess uh, like you know a lot of application do not have to worry about the csrf now because the, they are not maintaining the session but still it's uh, like you know i have seen uh, many applications uh, nowadays which do maintain cookies and and sometimes it is possible uh, to like if you are just using let's say a bearer token or something which is stored in your local storage in the browser and you have the cross site scripting vulnerability where someone can read from your uh, dom they can copy this value and then then can use this value to uh, exploit right so the the uh, CSRF uh, will always be around, uh, no matter like you know how how secure you go. Uh, of course, there are there are easier like now right now there are multiple frameworks available who does provide protection by default against the CSRF. So that's the reason uh, it has lost its popularity. But I would still uh, encourage you to learn about the CSRF and make sure you know about this. And not just before, because you've been, uh, you might get asked in the interview, but also something you might want to test on your every pen test assignment. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. I wanted to discuss about uh, in this video. Uh, hope you like it. Leave me a comment. What you think? Like, have you find any recent CSRF or have you come across an interesting uh, scenario with the CSRF? Uh, I would love to know. And everyone else would like also to know like you know as much as we can share that would be helpful for our community as well so uh, that's it uh, thank you thank you for watching and and uh, hit the subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next week thanks